Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel and today we're going to be seeing if the new Radeon RX 6700 XT is a better graphics card to pair up with a mid-range CPU like the Ryzen 3600 over the RTX 3070. Why I think this comparison is important is because with all these launch date graphics card reviews, they use the top of the line CPUs that can best utilize these graphics cards to of course just see apples to apples which one is faster. However, not everyone is rocking a 10900K or Ryzen 5900X. A lot of you are still rocking those older six core and four core CPUs you've held onto because you don't deem it necessary to upgrade yet. But more specifically, the reason why I'm exploring this exact topic is because some tech YouTubers have brought up to light again that Nvidia may have driver overhead issues with some of their high-end graphics cards on mid-range CPUs. So essentially, Nvidia drivers may be more taxing to run with a CPU that isn't that strong versus Radeon drivers, particularly on Vulkan and DX12 titles. And as you've seen with the 10900K and like a 5900X, those CPUs are absolutely fast enough to fully utilize an Nvidia graphics card to its fullest extent. But what about a Ryzen 3600? That isn't the fastest, six core 12 threads, Kind of a low clock speed compared to what you have nowadays and will that make the radeon 6700 xt a better card to pair up with on those mid-range cpus over an rtx 3070 which is why i'll be testing seven different games across these two graphics cards at 1440p and 1080p resolutions to see if this is true but first my initial impressions on the card and what i think about it so for specs it has 40 compute units a top boost clock speed of 2,581 megahertz, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and a 192-bit memory bus. And at least for the reference design, this has a six pin and eight pin power connector. Now, as far as this versus the competition, the main upside I see is that this has 12 gigs of GDDR6 memory, which versus the 3070 and 3060 Ti, that's four more gigs. If you're gonna be gaming at 1440p, look at this card portrays. Yeah, 12 gigs is gonna be quite useful if you're gonna be completely maxing out your titles, but I still think eight gigs is more than plenty in the year 2021 and even moving forward. For power and temperature, this card is going to run cooler than the 3070 and 3060 Ti, at least with this reference design, and it's going to draw less power. So if you care about that, or if you're working with like an ITX system, this might be a card to look at. And now let's get to the results and see if this 6700 XT can dethrone the 3070 on a mid-range CPU, given those possible NVIDIA driver overhead problems. Starting with Forza Horizon 4, it looks like the 6700 XT did outperform the 3070 at 1080p resolution by a pretty good amount, but for 1440p, the averages were about the same, but the 1% low on the 6700 XT was higher. Then going on to Fortnite, this is a DX12 title at epic settings at 1440p and 1080p. This time around, the 3070 looks like to outperform the 6700 XT across the board. But again, this is an Unreal Engine title. The 3070 being an NVIDIA card is probably gonna run faster than the 6700 XT. Then moving on to Civilization VI, the results are actually a little bit similar across both of these cards. One thing to note is that this is at DX12 as well. And again, I mean, 1% lows and averages at 1440p and 1080p are pretty close. Now though, moving on to CSGO between the 6700 XT and RTX 3070, the 3070 most certainly takes the lead in 1440p and 1080p by a pretty big margin using the benchmark map that I have. Now though, going on to Grand Theft Auto V and its built-in benchmark, the 3070 pulls ahead quite comfortably on 1080p and 1440p when MSAA is cranked up all the way to 8x scaling and the graphical settings are set to high. 
However, if we go to F1 2020, which is another DX12 title, the 6700 XT does outperform the 3070 in this scenario, but do keep in mind, I think F1 2020 is a more AMD optimized game. So just remember that when you're looking at these results. But now closing out with Rainbow Six Siege using the built-in benchmark tool at very high graphical settings, the 3070 pulls ahead in this scenario at 1440p and 1080p quite comfortably. So in conclusion, the results are inconclusive. At the end of the day, I think the faster card still remains for a mid-range CPU, that for the moment being the 3070. However, we might experience this driver overhead issue if we use a faster graphics card like the 6800 and the 6800 XT versus say a 3080 on the same 3600. There we might experience that issue more maybe at 1080p more so over 1440p, but that's a topic for another video. But now as far as my thoughts on the 6700 XT and if I ultimately recommend it, there's nothing wrong with this card. If anything, it is slightly slower than the 3070 while using less wattage and running cooler. Which goes to show something. Maybe if you pumped up the clock speed on this card and threw in some more wattage into it, maybe we could have an actual fight on our hands with this being a cheaper graphics card. But as we all know with the current graphics card market at the moment, we can't find any graphics card and MSRP probably for a while. So while I think this is an excellent graphics card for 1440p and 1080p gaming, because at the end of the day, it got quite a few frames per seconds on games that we want a lot of frames in at 1080p and 1440p resolutions. Availability. It's gonna really hone down this card. I wish it was more available for its targeted MSRP because it is a pretty awesome card at the end of the day, just like the others in this video. So that is my review and sort of opinions on the Radeon 6700 XT. And before I sign off on this video, I wanna give a thank you to our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community full of creatives and technicians like many of you watching this video. And since I'm getting back to video editing, or I guess I'm not getting back, I am back to video editing I have nailed the skin tones using HSL secondary, which you can check out the before and after right here. And how you can learn how to do that is through a course on Skillshare, like Color Correction and Premiere Pro, get your skin tones in your videos by Dennis Schrader. And there you can view it in Skillshare with an ad-free viewing experience, no fillers, no burned in ads, just learning. So if you'd like to get started, the first thousand of you to click the link at the top of the description below will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. And if you wanna get the real thing, it's as low as $10 a month with an annual subscription. Anyways, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scoutable Channel, signing out.